So, Naruto to Boruto Shinobi Striker Usamaki Edition was announced by Bandai Namco UK. All right. So peep this. Peep this, guys. Uh, we're getting, and when I say we, I'm talking about everybody in Europe is getting a Coletus Edition for the game. Now, this makes me extremely sad because I honestly feel like we're not going to get this. And when I say we, I'm talking about people in the U.S. If you guys can see at the picture itself, it says Peggy 12, USK. Uh, Peggy 12 is the rating system that they use over, over there in Europe. And USK, you know, basically, again, Europe. All right. So this edition, this Usamaki edition comes with the game, of course, the full game for either PS4 or Xbox, depending on your choice. It comes with a season pass that includes nine DLC packs, okay, and a costume, which is Uriah's costume. And you also get a statue of Hokage Naruto and Boruto. Let's talk about each individual thing, all right? Obviously, the game is going to be included because that's what you're getting the game for, right? The season pass is problematic for me because we're three whole months away from release three three whole months you count june you count july and then you count august because it, it literally releases on the last day of august are you telling me are you telling me we're gonna have nine dlc packs you've already decided that there's gonna be nine dlc packs on the season pass when we're three months away now, this is something that's very, very common nowadays, okay? I'm not surprised about it because the game industry has been doing this for the past few years now where they come out with season passes and deluxe editions and all oh, pre-order bonus and, and all this bullshit, okay? I'm still excited for the game. Now, the, the thing, though, about the season pass is that it smells very, very fishy to me simply because... I don't know, man. I'm just not getting good buys from it. The roster's super small for Shinobi Striker, and them announcing 9 DLC pass kind of lets me know that maybe they cut corners somewhere just so that way they can sell something as DLC. I could be completely wrong, though, okay? I don't want to be just the negative asshole. I want to give two sides of the spectrum here. Maybe, perhaps, they they decided, okay, since this game is going to be a make or break depending on how the online community works, right? Let's make sure we have DLC packs that can, we can work on after the game releases so we can sell it to people later down the line. So that way the game has like a nice longevity to it. And I vibe with that. I truly vibe with that because coming from the Storm games where like the developers were not really giving out support or DLC for the game like that. And when they did come out with DLC, it was kind of like, man, I can understand where they're going. Okay, this is definitely a different direction from CyberConnect 2. Now, is it a better method that they're using? Maybe, maybe not. I, I don't know because I don't work for Banda. I don't know the ins and outs or how they're working behind the scenes. So I couldn't really tell you. What I will tell you is that I am very excited for the game. I'm very excited to see what each pack comes because this is nine DLC packs. This isn't nine DLC characters. These are nine separate DLC packs. And if you kind of, you know, take your mentality or your imagination or your past experiences from Xenoverse, you can kind of get a feel of what you're going to have each pack. You're going to maybe have a character or two for the roster. Then you're going to have those same two characters as mentors. Then you're going to get accessories for those two characters. And it's a way to kind of stretch out content without really doing much. You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, here's two roster characters. But we can also make them ma uh, masters so that way you can get their jutsus. And then we'll give you their accessories as well. So it feels like you're getting more bang for your buck. But in reality, it's just like micro, mi they're micromanaging the same DLC and then breaking it into little pieces per pack, you know? That's basically how I see it. So nine DLC packs, we can expect a good chunk of characters out of it. We can expect a lot of accessories since that's a big thing going on with this game and the created character. Uh, so you know what? I'm happy for that. I'm happy for the season pass being a thing, to be honest with you. Uh, but at the same time, I'm kind of like worried because we're three months away. You get me? So, the statue. I want that shit. That's all I gotta say. I want that shit. Don't play with me, Bandai. Release that shit to everybody. You know? Stop giving Europe all the love. I'm in America, and I want some love, too. You know? 
And I get it. I get it. You know, like Bandai, in case you guys didn't know, Bandai does this type of shit because Europe is super, super big with Naruto. Like, if you guys have been around the block, if you guys have been here on YouTube around a little while, you know that they, they had multiple big tournaments, like for Naruto, uh, that was like broadcasted and everything, uh, for, for Naruto, like in Europe, you know, like I remember they had a, a big event also for Storm 4 on the Bandai Namco headquarters over there in the UK, and they invited a bunch of YouTubers to play the game, and not just, not just play the game, but like record gameplay of like all the ultimates and shit, and then throw them on YouTube, like, like, fuck the embargo, fuck all that, like, just throw it on YouTube if you want to type of shit, and I was like, well, shit, you know, Europe is getting a lot of love, like, I, I know a few YouTubers that are, like, French and German, that I, like, do a lot of Naruto uh, games and, and stuff like that, and they get flown out and invited to that type of stuff, but I'm like, holy shit, that's cool as fuck, but at least give us the collector's edition, Bandai, that's all I want. You know what I'm saying? I don't want any special treatment. Just let us over here in the U.S. have this collector's edition. For those that want it, obviously, because not everybody's down to play the game. Not everybody's okay with the collector's edition. Nobody, not everybody's going to buy it. But at the very least, it's, a, it's an option. You know, it's something that if collectors want it, they can get it and not have to go through through hoops and shit. You know, the last thing I want to talk about is the pre-order bonus. You get the Naruto 7 Hokage costume, and then you get Pain as a mentor as soon as you, as soon as you boot the game, essentially. Instead of you having to do X, Y, and C to unlock it in the game, they just give it to you, alright? I don't think it's a bad pre-order bonus, don't get me wrong. I just don't like the early asses shit. It doesn't make me feel special, you know? That Hokage costume, it makes me feel like a very special boy, because I know that only the people that pre-ordered is gonna have the shit. And not everybody and their mama, you know? But the pain, everybody's going to have it at some point. Whether it be an hour, two hours, a whole day after the game releases, everybody's going to have this motherfucker. So it's not special. I wish they would have done more customs instead of having pain as an unlockable early access thing. Because it's whatever, man. I don't care for that. Anyways, I'm, I'm done with the video. Uh, you guys let me know what you think about the Skeletus Edition. Let me know about the Season Pass. How do you feel about it? Nine DLC packs already announced. Holy shit. Three months away from release, and we got nine DLC packs. Let me know how you feel about that. Anyways, guys, I'm out. Peace.